皆さんこんにちは。素粒子物理学者の村山仁です。今年はヒックス粒子発見10周年ということで、そのヒックス粒子を提唱されたピーター・ヒックスさんのインタビューのビデオについて反論してみたいと思います。これは日本の高校生からの質問に答えたビデオです。質問は、素粒子物理に興味を持ち、研究を始めたきっかけは何ですかということで聞いてみたいと思います。あ東大の人ですね高校時代から。During the war years, or most of the war years,、uh, actually, actually from Easter 1941 until the summer of 1946.、うんね、first Cotton Secondary School and Cotton Grammar School. It's now simply Cotton School.、Uh, but it's in a previous incarnation, it was the Merchant Venturers Technical College. The Merchant Venturers are the The only merchant company of Bristol, Edinburgh has many merchant companies, but in Bristol, the merchant venturers were the, the organization who organized the fishing fleets in the North Atlantic, and it's believed that they may have come close to discovering America,、mm. the American mainland, before, not before the Scandinavians perhaps, but before、uh, Christopher Colombo. Uh, because uh, the fishing fleet from Bristol、uh, went way into the North Atlantic, lost the fish because they were off the continental shelf,、mm. and then after, after several days' journey, they found fish again, and that was presumably the Grand Banks of Newfoundland,、mm. but they never looked for land.、Oh, so so this school. Was a strange school. It belonged to the Merchant Ventures Company and it was not just a secondary high school, it had a tertiary level、uh, which began to prepare students for a career in engineering.、Mm. Uh, that school was the school at which Paul Dirac was a pupil. Oh, Dirac was a pupil. At the end of the 1914 1918 war, the University of Bristol, which had been created in the late 19th century, began to build a school of engineering. As the basis for, for this, they took over the tertiary level of this. This technical college,、mm. and that became the first year of engineering in the university.、Uh, Paul Dirac was in that first cohort of students. And ちょっと止めますね、えっと、このポール・ディラックっていう人はあのノーベル賞物理学者の一人で量子力学の基礎を築いた人の一人なんですけれども、まあ、多分もっと有名なのは半物質が存在するっていうことを予言した人でもあります。で今の宇宙は何で物質だけあって半物質がないのかっていうのは大きな問題だって別のビデオで話したことがありますけれどもそもそもはこのポール・ディラックさんが半物質の存在するんだということを予言しそれがあの後に実験で発見されてでまあそれでこういう大問題が面白い確立したとでそういうすごい物理学者が高校の先輩だったっていうことみたいですねそれがどうも影響になったみたいです次行ってみます At the end of this transition period the school was transferred to the city education authority and renamed the first bottom secondary school Connections that I have with Dirac, then, were that I w- went to that school when my family moved from Birmingham to Bristol、uh, because my father worked for the BBC and they thought that Bristol, being 120 miles west of London, would, be, would not be bombed、mm-hmm. the way that London was bombed. 
uh, and they were wrong. Oh. Uh, because we arrived in Bristol, where my father had been sent at Easter uh, 1941, and two days previously, the ancient centre of Bristol had been destroyed. Ah, so that's so, uh, I found myself having started secondary education in a school on the western fringe of Birmingham, I found myself transferred to Cotton School in, at Easter 1941. Uh, where the place that I lived was some way from the school that I used to walk there in the morning, taking about half an hour, leaving not very much time to arrive in time or morning assembly. Hmm. So I would stand at the back of the hall in which the pupils were assembled. Um, we were expected to, to sing some really dreadful uh -huh. hymns. Uh, and the uh, staff of the school would be on the platform at the, at the opposite end. And at the back of the platform, there was a, a board and the board uh, was a list of the honours achieved by former pupils. Mm. And when I arrived and stood at the back, I couldn't help, help noticing that the name Paul Adrian Maurice Dirac occurred several times. Mm. So I got to wonder, who was this guy? And um, it took me some time to find out because I didn't have the background to uh, make contact with this sort of thing. But mm. by the time I was, uh, uh, say, 15 or 16, I, 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 had, I, had, I had acquired popular science books which don't, told me about the marvels of things like quantum mechanics and modern physics mm. and things called antiparticles, oh, positrons. And so I, I got an idea of what Dirac had, had done. So that triggered my curiosity on the theoretical side. At the beginning of my school days, I thought I would follow in my father's footsteps to become an engineer, but I rapidly discovered that I was so incompetent and then <laughs> again, in this way, following in the footsteps of, of Paul Dirac. <laughs> it was a disaster as an engineer. I first of all decided it, it had better be pure physics and later on uh, not practical physics, experimental physics. Uh, I, I couldn't, couldn't, do, couldn't do the experiments <laughs> physics because I had some mathematical skills. And so that was one strand. At the end of my school days, uh, I was in the science sixth form from 1944 to 1946. Well, in, in 1945, that, that war ended. Mm. And amongst the events which were the organized by the events which were organized by the professors of physics in the University of Bristol in that year, there was lectures to acquaint the public as far as was possible, given the secrecy involved, and educate the public in the background to the nuclear bombs and um, the dropping of the nuclear bombs was an experience for me which, which almost put me off continuing as a physicist. Mm, so this year, but, uh, uh, the lectures by Nibble Mott and Cecil Powell. Cecil Powell, uh, a particle physicist, was so pleased with the attendance of these lectures that he thought perhaps there might be an audience for uh, some lectures on what he was being, had been doing uh, as a particle physicist. Mm. So he, he, he laid on another course of lectures in, in the following year, 1946, and I duly uh, attended. There were evening, early evening lectures, so I went after school, and I learned uh, about his experiments sending up balloons carrying 
hot-air balloons carrying stacks of photographic emulsion uh, to study what was coming at us in cosmic rays. And uh, as, as I'm sure members of the audience in Tokyo know, he was successful. And when I was a first year student at King's College London uh, in 1948, I attended another lecture by Cecil Powell on the discovery of the pi plus and the pi minus. Introduction to particle physics, both theory and experiment. And by that time, I, I was, I'd resolved that I would become a, a, a particle physicist, but a theoretical particle physicist, because I was incompetent in, 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 in laboratory work. And this, eventually I did, and it involved a kind of apprenticeship in a different kind of theory at King's College London, where they didn't have uh, that kind of, of theoretical physics uh, research. And I really started uh, learning systematically about the theory when I moved to Edinburgh in 1954 uh, to work with Nicholas Kemmer, who had succeeded Max Born mm. and who had taught, when he was in Cambridge, most of the uh, cleverest of, of the generation of, 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 of British particle theorists. いや,やっぱり高校に入学してその壁にこうその過去の生徒が取ったいろんな賞のリストがあるところにノーベル賞とかなかったらやっぱりすごいですよねそりゃ興味を持つかなと思いますよねでもやっぱりいろいろやろうとしても自分は実験に向いてないのが分かったので理論をやろうと思ったってことでしたけどもそれでもやっぱりそのパウエルさんがそのパイ流中間子その湯川さんが予言した粒子を発見したその実験の話を聞いてやっぱ理論と実験と両方あるので興味を持ったって言ってますから、まあ、当然科学ってそういうもんですよね実験があって新しい発見があるとそれ以上の人が一生懸命って説明するって。でその理論をもとついて今度いろんな人が新しい予言をしてそれを実験の人がまた検証していくそれが行ったり来たりしてやっぱり進んでいくのが科学なので、まあ、本当にそれにあのヒッグスさんはこう魅了されたっていう感じがよく伝わってきましたで出てくる人の名前もすごいですよねあの教わった先生の前任者がマックス・ボルンだってこの人もノーベル賞物理学者なんですがなんとあのそのお孫さんがオリエア・リュートン・ジョーンですね、まあ、いろんなところにつながりがありますまあ、というわけであのヒックスさんが何でそれを物理学者になったのかとやっぱりそういう偉大なその先人に影響を受けたとでもそれだけじゃなくてやっぱりあの本当にこうピュアなサイエンスをやりたかったんだって言ってましたからやっぱり人間ってそういうピュアなものに惹かれるっていうか本当にこれ知りたいなっていうものにこう取りつかれちゃうとそれやっちゃうっていうところがあるだろうと、まあ、ヒックスさんはそういう人だったんだなというふうに思って聞いてみました。